Every day, we take showers, flush our toilets, and use our sinks. The wastewater that is drained needs to be cleaned before it's returned to the environment. So where does it go? As the water leaves the homes, it goes into sewage pipes and travels by gravity and lift pump stations to a wastewater treatment facility. When the wastewater arrives at the water treatment facility, the first stop in the treatment process is the headworks. At the headworks, rags and other large objects are removed with a bar screen. And any sand in the water is also removed. The wastewater is mixed with millions of hungry bacteria, ready to begin consuming organic material in the water. Then it is sent to aeration basins. The aeration basins are where the workforce of hungry bacteria does its job. Large rotating paddles stir up the mixture, adding oxygen to the water, creating a perfect environment for bacteria to thrive. These bacteria absorb the waste material as food and use it to grow and multiply. As the bacteria ingest the waste, the bacteria multiplies and converts the waste material into something completely different called biomass. This biomass is actually the population of bacteria in the water. Here you can see the biomass just beneath the surface. Each day, technicians take samples of this biomass and perform tests to determine if the proper environment for the bacteria is being achieved. Technicians also test the pH of the biomass and calibrate equipment to ensure proper readings. Computer systems also monitor the conditions inside each of the areas of the treatment facility. The bacteria remains in the aeration basin on average for 22 hours before leaving the aeration basin for the next location in the process. The next step happens in the clarifiers. The motion of the water is greatly reduced in the clarifiers, allowing the biomass to settle to the bottom. The clear water remains on the top, and the biomass on the bottom is removed by sweeps. The biomass that has been swept away leaves the clarifiers under the pull of gravity, and then is pumped to one of two locations. Some of the biomass is returned to the headworks to start the process all over again ready to consume more waste material. The other portion is sent for dewatering. Because the bacteria multiplies, a portion each day needs to be removed from the process so the system isn't overpopulated with bacteria. This happens at a belt press, where the water is removed from the biomass. A polymer is added to the biomass, causing it to coagulate. Then a belt and a series of drums presses all of the water out of the biomass. The dried biomass is now called biosolids. A conveyor belt takes the biosolids and loads it onto a truck to be taken to a landfill. Back at the clarifiers, the clear water on top runs over the edges of the weirs, flowing out of the clarifiers to be treated in the next step. The next step is filtration. Large disk filters filter out any other solid particles in the water. The water flows into the outside of the disks and exits through the center of the filtration system. After this, the water is disinfected by ultraviolet lights. By the end of this step of the process, the water has already met very high quality standards and is suitable for many uses. Depending on the wastewater treatment facility location, the water that leaves the facility might be sent to one of three general locations. Some water is sent to golf courses for irrigation. Some of the water is sent to the Beaufort River. And some facilities send the water to an area known as the Great Swamp. The Great Swamp is a project that is replenishing wetlands that were drying as a result of residential and commercial development. These wetlands are now home to a variety of species of animals and plant life.
So the next time you wash your dishes, or take a shower, or flush your toilet, you can be sure that because of Beaufort Jasper Water and Sewer Authority's efforts and technology, what leaves your house as waste is actually being turned into clean water that is benefiting the environment. <laughs>